everybody, welcome to the Roadsmiths. Well, what better time to review our 2023 travel expenses than midway through 2024? A little bit late on that. We traveled for most of the year in 2023, and we were stationary for several months. We want to detail what our travel expenses were, because you know, it's all about the money. It's the money. So the reason for this video is we want to give you a glimpse of our real-time expenses living on the road and compare those expenses to the costs that we incurred uh, when we were living in our sticks and bricks, the one that we sold to go on the road full-time, or mostly full-time. Well, if you're new to our channel, I'm Ken. And I'm Pam. In the last three years, we traveled in our 35-foot Alliance 310 RL fifth wheel. This is not that fifth wheel. This is Alliance 2075. And if you followed our channel, you know that we purchased this to go to Alaska, but our plans changed because our youngest is pregnant in Colorado. Yes, and I didn't want to miss any of the fun stuff associated with that, you know, throughout the pregnancy. Yeah, so it's interesting. So now we're traveling this year in this. We figured we got it. Let's, the, let's try the it. The Alliance is in storage in case anybody's yeah, we, we still interested. Have <laughs> we still have that, which is good. And we'll get back to that. And so we're kind of digging the small nimbleness of, the, of this little rig. And, you know, it's taken some time to get used to. But anyway, in order to really do this video any justice, let's compare the costs of our sticks and bricks that we lived in for 22 years, I guess it was. 22 plus, yeah. Yeah. Which also, let me apologize for the sunglasses, but it's so bright out here. It's either this or my eyes are closed. We're in New Mexico right now, and while it's it's sort of cool, the sun is blistering. So <laughs> we're trying to stay under the under the shade here. But we, like I said, in that house for 22 years. Now we owned the house outright, uh, which was great. But uh, Texas is a is an interesting tax state. No state income tax. So while we were working, then there's there was no income tax. But property taxes, especially in the suburbs of the big cities, are pretty exorbitant. So let's kind of break down our monthly expenses uh, of that house, because that'll compare to our expenses of all our travels that we've done to see, is it feasible for people to actually do that? So first and foremost, our property taxes alone were over $14,000 a year. That was it's kinda huge. It's kind of high. I mean, <laughs> just huge. And but, but granted, it was it was well worth it while our children in, were yeah. in school because we had fantastic school systems. So that was great. Oh, oh yeah. Allen Independent School District was great. So we just appreciated that. So think about what the monthly expense of that was. It's about 1200 bucks a month. Gas and electric was about $400 a month. Mm -hmm. Obviously the summer yeah, months was crazy because of the air conditioners. And then uh, winter, we had to run gas for heat uh, a little bit. Yeah. And then what else? Uh, well, we had uh, insurance costs, which averaged $600 a month, and uh, just a general upkeep, you know, lawn maintenance, uh, house maintenance, whatever, is an average uh, $200 a month. Yeah, and then we had, uh, I guess, water and sanitation as well, and that was about 300 bucks a month. So, you know, give or take $2,700 a month, which is, you know, exorbitant. Again, we didn't have a mortgage on it, and that came out to be, I'm just looking at our notes here, about $32,400 a year. So, let's compare how we did relative to our travel to see, did we make a huge mistake selling our house and traveling? Did we save money and still enjoy it? Or did we just enjoy it and spend a whole lot more money? So we'll be right back with that. 2023, we started in Florida as we normally have been. Um, we, we camped January and March, February, we were making repairs to our condo. So we didn't have really those expenses for that month. Uh, fuel costs for that period of time, those three months, was $904. And our camping costs were six hundred. I'm sorry, $1,609 um, for those three months for a total of $2,513. So we spent the month of March, as Pam said, uh, you know, in Florida, actually at Ocala North again, which was which is great. We love that place. But in April and part of May, we went back down to the condo just to, you know, we'd kind of do that on the shoulder months. And then we left from there to go back to Texas and then actually up to Indiana. So that was a good bit of travel in there. 
uh, and because we went to the rally for uh, Alliance and then get some repairs done. So in those several months, we did uh, $1,763 in fuel and $654 in camping for a total of $2,417. So again, a lot of miles there from Florida back to Texas. Now, while we were in Texas, we had some uh, maintenance done. I got new tires uh, on the truck and we put new tires well, the fifth wheel's not here. That's right. The Alliance is here. We put uh, new tires on the Alliance fifth wheel, and that was over $2,000 for all eight tires, but well worth it because uh, it, was, it was time to change those. June and July, we went from Indiana to Montana. Um, we didn't have a lot of camping expenses for those two months, mostly because we did a lot of Harvest Host. And of course, we were staying July at a Harvest Host work camping. Therefore, our expenses for camping of those two months were pretty much. What, $255? That's it, pretty cheap. Doesn't sound right, right, for that, but, but, but no, our, no cost in July, which is yeah. you know, part of it. But our fuel costs were uh, pretty significant because that was a lot of miles, obviously. And even, even a part of fuel cost, too, is not just the travel from Indiana to uh, Montana, but we had some of the stops that we made, like in uh, Minnesota, we went up to Duluth, and then we know we did a lot of stuff while oh, we're... we did some exploration. Yeah, exploration while, we while we're doing that. So, but the camping, again, was very minimal for that, for that period. And thanks again, Tracy and Kurt, for letting us do what we did, because we... We really loved had, it. We, we loved it. <laughs> I know what you're thinking. Well, that's pretty cheap to travel. And, and that, part, that part of the year really was pretty cheap because, again, we didn't have a lot of expenses camping-wise for July. We stayed in our condo for, for a number of months. And some of the, you know, the driving was just straight through. But that was about to change. And so after we left Montana, we pivoted and we wound up going to Washington, to Oregon, uh, a lot of different places in Oregon. We wound up going down to Reno and then we wound up down in Vegas as well. And uh, so that was a lot of driving and a lot of camping expenses. But quite frankly, well worth it. That, that part of the trip was just, was just outstanding. So in that period of time from really August to November, we'll talk about what we did afterwards. Uh, and, and actually the drive back to Texas too is included in this fuel cost because we did go back for November and December. But the fuel cost for those several months was $2,675. Now, a lot of miles, but we all know fuel is more expensive on the West Coast, and uh, we just had to deal with it. Right? We had no choice in, in the places that we wanted to go. Camping was a whopping $4,074, um, only because we didn't stay really at a month at a time in a lot of places. We moved about once every six or seven days in Oregon, maybe maybe a week or so, and we went to a lot of different places. We zigzagged from, yeah, from Rockaway Beach over to the Limit Valley, to over to Florence, back to the coast, over to Bend, uh, Bend or, uh, and Sisters, Oregon, down to Crater Lake. And so we moved a lot in that period. And, then and, we, and our alliance is not set up for boondocking, which probably a lot of people, if they were in those areas, would have done some boondocking. But I would disagree with that. I would say oh. that I would say that the alliance is set up for boondocking, but you're not set up for boondocking as much. Hey. <laughs> no, we have we have we have two 100 hour, amp hour lithium batteries, and uh, and we've got two solar panels, so not great. But in the in the camping, the boondocking we have done in like Harvest House, it gets us through the night easy, and uh, obviously the tanks are no issue okay. based on that. Correction, extended boondocking. Extended boondocking, yeah. right? For for sure, and there's a lot of places to do that. However. And that's one of the reasons this guy I'm comes into play yeah. as, well, as well. So anyway, so that was uh, that was you know pretty a pretty expensive uh, part of that of that trip. But again, well worth it. In the um, uh, in the end of the year, uh, we stayed in back in Texas for the holidays, November December, and in the place that we typically stay at, uh, it's eight hundred fifty dollars a month plus electric. But you know you got to you know count that as well. So it was about eighteen hundred dollars. Uh, uh, for the two months there in Texas. So again, not bad. And I think that comes to a grand total of about $16,392. Not too bad. Sounds like a lot of money and, and, and it is a lot of money. Let's, let's not be, uh, let's not be coy about that, but the experiences will definitely well worth it. And again, if I compare that to just staying in their home and that's not even without any major expenses, because we had a, we had a pool in the back and, that was the bane of my existence in a, in a lot of cases. Just the year we had to replace three AC units. Well, I mean, that yeah, was like, that was a long time ago. But but yeah, I mean that was a huge, you know, twenty six thousand dollars. That was a huge bill. So so the the costs that we showed were not costs. They were basically just standard costs that we had on a monthly basis, uh, not anything that was exorbitant. I mean, we've we've 
had three roofs and things like that. So we didn't consider that uh, in this. And uh, b because, you know, food is, you know, you're going to eat, you know, whether you're in a house or whether you're out traveling, we didn't include those costs. And quite frankly, I would even say, and I don't know if you would agree with this, we go oh. out to out, we go out to eat less. So when we were traveling in the paradigm, uh, we absolutely went out to eat less. I would say we only averaged out to eat maybe twice a week. If and, even if even that. I and mean. cooked all the other time. Now, in this one, I think our uh, food costs are going to change dramatically. Number one, our refrigerator and storage Doesn't is pretty small, so we can't keep you know a, a very large supply of food. And um, so I'm sure that we're going to see a change this year. And I'm sure that breaks your heart. Oh. To go out to eat more. <laughs> anyway, so uh, hopefully this is helpful. Like I said, this is something that when we before we started doing this, uh, it took me two years to convince her to kind of do this full time thing. And I think you're pretty happy doing it. You know, yeah, I, mean, I, I love it. I do. Um, and so one of the ways we had to look at that was, again, what was our monthly cost of just staying in our house? And were we going to incur a lot more costs by traveling? And as you can see, we really haven't. I mean, there's maybe a couple months where it's close in that maybe month or two at a time, but it's not a consistent, uh, you know, aspect of that. And we've had months where we've we've saved, we've spent maybe half, in some cases even less than half of what it costs us just to stay in our house. And again, we didn't have a mortgage on that house, but the property taxes were, were the biggest thing. And I know that's not the same in other parts of the country, but you know, there's other taxes that make up for that. So uh, hopefully this is helpful for you. Yeah, well, one thing I was just thinking about that we we didn't include in this comparison that would probably change dramatically would be entertainment expenses yeah. because, you know, we probably, I don't know, I'd say we, uh, maybe we can't include that because a lot of the stuff we do now is free <laughs> and stuff we would have done in our home we're YouTubers. was we, not free. <laughs> we're YouTubers. We watch other YouTubers. We hike a lot. No, I mean, I mean we hike a lot true, and we yeah. explore uh, that way so there's no cost involved. Yeah. Anyway, leave a comment below if there's something you guys have done analysis with and you, know, you felt like it was uh, a benefit to you, you know, obviously experience-wise, there's no doubt it's a benefit, but cost-wise, was it a benefit to you? And I'd be curious about, you know, how that panned out and are we crazy with the amount of money that we're spending? Should we spend more? I don't even <laughs> want to ask that question because I know what you heard. Don't even make be. that offer. Yeah, so uh, <laughs> anyway, thanks for, uh, thanks for paying attention for so long and thanks for watching and uh, we hope to see you on the road. Yeah, hopefully we'll see you out there. It's the money.